Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is not joining us for this knife talk. And today we are doing a knife talk on how to get what you want when ordering a knife or when you see a knife or whatever. And what I'm talking about is like when you see a pictures of a knife on the internet or wherever you get your knives, you, you might be wanting, say, specifics. So, like, say maybe you want a knife with good blade geometry. So, how do you see pictures of it and figure out if that thing has good blade geometry? How do you see the handle and see if it has good ergos? How do you determine if the clip is going to be what you want? Now, maybe it's something else that you want, but with these little tips and tricks, you might be able to determine to get exactly what you want. Well, maybe a hard use knife, maybe, you know, good blade geometry, maybe thin behind the edge, stuff like that. So there's little tips and tricks that I do because a lot of times I buy knives on the internet that don't have any reviews. And sometimes you might even be able to determine some of this stuff by watching a review if the person or if the reviewer doesn't say them. So let's go over some of the tricks that I use when I'm buying knives, say, you know, and I, I look at them, how I determine whether or not it's a knife for me. First up, let's talk about blade geometry. How do I figure out if a knife is going to have good blade geometry or the type of blade geometry that I'm looking for in that moment? So first up, I look at the blade stock thickness. Now, all knives are going to tell you the blade stock thickness. So on the site that you're getting it, you look up the blade stock thickness and it'll tell you what it has. So like, say a Benchmade bug out. This usually, this is pretty much a, a thin blade stock thickness, the bug out. And the bug out's about 0 0.090, that's 90 thousandths thick or 2.29 millimeters thick. Some companies tell you millimeters, some people tell you in thousands. So the Shaman, which has a pretty thick blade stock thickness, is 150,000. So it's 0.150 thickness. I don't know what that is in millimeters, but that's what it is in thousands. So, um, so you can like look it up. Say if it tells you in millimeters, you can go online and figure out if that's you know what that is in thousands, or if it's in thousands, you can figure out what it is in millimeters. You can do that on the internet. Um, but what I do is I, I do a point of reference, right? So like say if I know that this is 150 thousandths and say if the knife I'm looking at is 160 thousandths, well then I know it's 10 thousandths thicker than the Shaman that I have. Or I'll reference another knife that I have and figure out by looking it up what blade stock thickness does this knife have or I'll measure it myself. Or say like the bug out. You know, I know that this is 90,000 thick. So uh, any knife that's around there is going to have a pretty thin blade stock or even a 100,000 thick. You know, you, you figure that out. And so like when I'm looking at that, I look at that versus the depth. So depending on how thick or thin the blade stock thickness is and how much room does it have to drop. So like say a knife with this type of blade stock thickness can get down to a reasonable edge even though the shaman's known to have you know pretty thick behind the edge but it has so much room to drop that it passes through materials pretty pretty good because it slowly drops down to this edge. Now you take a knife like this that has the same blade stock thickness, but only has this far to drop, guess what? It's gonna be pretty thick behind the edge. There's no way around it. It's just gonna have to, unless if it has a really deep hollow ground blade, but this is a flat ground blade. So in order for it to get from this thick down to the edge, even if it had a fully flat ground blade, it would it's still going to have poor blade geometry it's going to be it's going to have too quick of a taper now another way is i look at the tip so so like say let me grab a couple knives so like say a knife like this it already has a, a thin blade stock and then look at the tip the tip is either is most likely going to be the thickest part of the edge not always sometimes it's the thinner part but either way, it's still going to give you a reference of how thick the edge is. So now look at the taper down to the tip. That's going to be either the thickest or thinnest part of the edge. So that's how thick my edge is. Now another way is if you can watch it in a video, sometimes in pictures, you can look right here and you can see how thin it gets right there. If 
my camera will focus. So right there, you can see how thick it is right there. I have another knife that might actually be a little bit better for this. Right here. See how thin it gets right there above my nail? See that tapers down? That's how thick the edge is. Then also, all factories, or the majority of production knives, they sharpen their edges at 22 and a half degrees. The reason why they do it at 22 and a half degrees is because production companies have figured out that the strongest edge that they can have is about 22 and a half degrees. So most production companies, that's what their angle is. So if you see three knives from the same company, you're going to see the same angle on all of them. Now, a thin blade is going to have a thin edge. A thick blade, or should I say a thick edge, is going to have a big edge. So see how much thicker this is than this edge? Because this is thicker behind the edge. So that, you know, even if it's the same angle, which those two aren't, but if they were the same angle, it's going to be a dramatic difference because this is so much thinner. So I look at the edge and look at how thin it is, especially compared to maybe some of their other knives because they're all most likely sharpened at the same exact angle. Now here's a point of reference of something that's thick. Look at how thick this is. And I'll look at all the way to the tip. Look at that tip. See how thick it is still? It's very thick. So this thing most likely doesn't have the best blade geometry, which it doesn't. It's very thick behind the edge. It's got a very thick blade stock. You see how thick the edge is right there. So I can determine it if I can see a picture of it like this, which a lot of knives do show that. And if not, I can look at the, the, um, the edge and see how thick that edge is. Now, something that, like I said, something that's thin is going to have a thinner edge. The edge is just going to be thinner. I'm sorry about my focus, guys, but you see how thin that edge is? Now, that's because this thing's only 15 thousandths. Now, if you look at like a knife like this, this is going to change because this, even though it has a thick stock, and now this is another thing, if it does have a short drop and it has a thick blade stock, then you, you're going to want a hollow ground blade. Now, not all flat ground blades, a lot, there's a lot of very great um, blade geometry that comes from flat ground blades. But if it's going to have a very thick blade stock and it doesn't have much to drop, then it should have a hollow ground blade so it can get down to a thin edge. Now, if you look at this, this is 15 thousandths behind the edge, and then it gets up to a thicker part up here the flat ground because this is a dual grind it's hollow here and flat here now if you look look at how the edge changes it goes from thinner to thicker see how thin it is and then see how thick it is up towards the tip that's because even though this is the exact same angle it's thinner and thinner then once it gets to a thicker part the edge gets thicker because the blade gets thicker. So same thing as what I'm talking about. So basically you're referencing how thick the blade stock is versus how tall it has to drop and whether or not the blade stock thickness starts off thick or not. And then how thin and thick the edge is. How, you know, how thick does it look? Okay, that's how I can determine uh, if it has the type of blade geometry that I'm looking for. Okay, so next up, I just want to say for next month's giveaway to our Patreons, we are giving one of these away with the giveaway. We're thinking about, we're going to give away an entire EDC. So to one of our Patreons, and then this, one of these are going to be included in the giveaway. This is the strongest um, concentration of pepper spray you can get. This is a very reputable brand, and we'll be adding this in the last uh, video. I did reference the wrong price on these. I actually put these both together. They're only about $12.99 a piece. So if you want to get one of these yourself um, and just purchase one, you can go on to palmindustries.com and you can get one yourself. So, or you can enter the Patreon giveaway or enter to be a Patreon and be a part of the monthly giveaways. All right. So let's look at handles and, um, you know, like, um, 
grip. Let's let's talk about that. Okay, so this is actually the knife I'm giving away today. Um, I don't know when you're watching this, but this is the we're about to do the giveaway video on this. So that's why I have it out. So now handles. Okay, so now handles. When you see a handle that tapers down like this and gets thicker and thinner up here, it's going to be a handle that most likely pushes you back a little bit it keeps you know it's you're not really close to the blade unless if you have a finger choil to get up on but just like this i have a couple more knives but they're not here i wish if i did have them here i could show it to you but um but see how it kind of pushes me back farther now if i want a handle where i'm gonna have say universal or be able to get up closer to the handle without it pushing me back just a little bit then i'm gonna want something a little more neutral like you see how this has more of a straight back design so and it doesn't taper down and then it stays basically the same thickness throughout so that's going to allow me to get up more, more closer to the blade with my hand now this one if it has a choil you can do that because it can let you up. But if it doesn't have a choil, then this is as far as you're going to be able to get up close to the blade. Luckily, this one has a nice finger choil and lets you get up there. It's not the biggest finger choil, but still has very good ergos. But everybody likes different kinds of ergos. But this type of blade handle does push you back on the handle just a little bit. A lot more than, say, something like this that allows you to get up closer to the blade. Now, this isn't really a finger choil right there. So if it did have one, then I'd really be able to get close. Now, let's look at a couple other ones. Something like this is going to be very neutral, just straight. It doesn't make you go anywhere. You basically get to determine where you put your fingers. And I, that's why I really like you know, uh, handles that are very neutral. I like neutral handles. Neutral handles to me are just handles that are nice, straight. This one does have a little bit of the teardrop, but it's still a very neutral handle. It allows me to do with what I want and how I want to do it. Like even if this thing has, see this is mostly straight, it has a little bit of the palm swell, but that's just for the center of the hand. It still allows me to get and use it how I want to and where I want to position my hand. Now when you start to getting to shapes, that's when you're going to have positions like this. Either I'm back far or I'm up close. So they're going to, it's determining where you know, to put my hand, which this has great ergos, great ergos right here. Back here, a lot of people don't use the knife back here, but if you're going to use it, you're so far back. So looking at things like that, neutral blade handles versus shaped handles. So, you know, because shaped handles are always going to put you in a determined position. Now, another thing is going to be the height versus width. Okay, so now something that is tall, right, and skinny might not have the best ergos when it comes to squeezing. This one's fine because this one has a good thickness to it. But let's say, um, you know, something like this. This is a little thin versus the height. Now, if it's skinnier, then it's even going to be even worse for ergos so the fact that it has a little bit of height right here is what gives it pretty good ergos this is really nice in the hand now it's not going to be as comfortable as something if it was just a little bit thicker um like say the whole gritter see it's got a palm swell this has really good ergos it feels good in the hand because it gives you something to squeeze now something that's thin isn't really giving you much to squeeze and the taller it is here the more it's going to pinch you know like cause it's going to be so thin pushing into the areas of your hand that it might not be as comfortable as you think now this one has that 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 good um difference you know between where it's not too tall and it's thin so you know it, it's kind of kind of neutral but some knives can be a little too tall versus how thin they are. So if you can look at the handle thickness versus how tall it is, that'll tell you a lot about the ergos and also the shape of the handle.
Now, also the materials of the handle. So, like, say, micarta. Micarta is a really soft, warm material that, uh, with temperature, doesn't get cold, like, say, metal and titanium. Titanium and, you know, and steel might be cold in the in cold temperatures. Um, and G10, the same way. It's a little more softer, um, and you, they, you know, they can add lots of grip to it or make it soft. You know, the company's going to determine the texture. You know, the same thing with titanium, but, you know, you're going to have different textures and different feelings of grip. So, you know, determining what type of material it is versus the shape it is versus the thickness it is versus the height it is determines on whether or not it's going to have the ergos you're looking for. So if you know that all the different materials and how they feel, then you can determine what that texture is going to feel like or what you think it's going to feel like ver you know, in your own hand and whether or not it has a, a swell in it. So if it's nice and rounded so your hands can wrap around it or is it going to be really thin and skinny? where it's not going to have much room you you know you're going to be you're not going to get good ergos on it because it's so small and skinny in the hand or maybe thin or something like this it's nice and straight now this has neutral ergos but it's not tall enough to give you great ergos you know like yeah it's fine for edc so but maybe that's what you're looking for is a nice skinny edc knife so term you know depending on what you're looking for and what you're wanting now, there's even like uh, plastics like FRN that, you know, are going to be um, a little bit in between. Now, they're, they're strong and it's lightweight and everything, but, um, you know, so that's going to have a lot to do with the weight of the knife and how heavy it is and whether or not it has liners and stuff like that. And you can read about that stuff, whether or not it has full liners and you can look at the weight and reference it versus other things that weigh that much. Okay, let's get to clips. There's lots of different clips out there. So now first up, you need to determine whether or not you want a deep carry clip or a, you know, a not so deep. So like this shallow carry, you get a lot hanging out of your pocket. It's not deep carry versus a deep carry. See how it wraps around right there. So your pocket can go all the way up to there and you don't have much hanging out. You can determine which one you like. Now, one thing that I really like, my favorite kind of clip, Actually, let's talk about spring clips versus milled clips. Okay, so my favorite's actually uh, a milled spring clip, but let's talk about this real quick. So this is a milled clip. They look the best. They look really good, but they're they're different than say just a spring clip, just a just a regular clip. Okay, it's just a base clip. Now this is a good clip, still a great clip, and it works really well. And this is a good clip too, but some people would rather have the ease in another pocket and the nice deep carry versus, say, a, you know, just a milled titanium clip. Now, you can get milled titanium clips, which is my favorite when it's like, um, this isn't a titanium clip, but when it looks like this, you know what, I think I have, I have one right here somewhere. Doggone it. Here we go. So like this. So it's got nice ramp right here. The clip lip right there. Nice ramp. And it gives you plenty of room in there. Now a steel clip that's kind of like that. Like this is a very good clip too. These are my favorite kind of clips. Clips that do this. They wrap around right there. And have you know like that. That nice point where it's nice and strong. Gives you a good pinch point on the surface of the um the handle now same thing with this see how it wraps around and it goes down now this head look at the pinch point it goes from here to here that's holding a lot of material and it has a nice lip on it so it's going to go in and out of the pocket really nicely now milled clips can work really good as long as the lip is easy to get in and out some clips aren't easy some clips are horrible to get in and out because they don't have sorry they don't have enough ramp right here to get 
over your pants. So you want to make sure that it has good ramp like this for a milled clip. Nice ramp, good pinch point, nice strength, you know, and then whether or not you want deep carry or not, you know, is up to you. And then there's also wire clips that work really well. Nobody complains really how wire clips work. Wire clips work very good in and out of the pocket and hold very good. People just don't like the looks of them. After using them, you know, a lot of times people change their tune. Sometimes the worst part can be the ramp though because a lot of times it'll be in your palm. This one works just fine, but you want to look sometimes because sometimes like this, see how it goes so far down. Now my hand is going to land right there and you can tell, you know, so a lot of times that might bother some people. You know, a lot of knives have good ergos and just the way it works for the handle, it doesn't bother you. Like this one doesn't bother me at all, but some people do get bothered by clips that have a big spoon up right here. Maybe it might be too high. So that has everything to do with ergos and how it feels in the hand, whether or not it has hot spots or not. And also the surface of the material that your pants are gonna be sliding on or the material, whether or not it's slick, whether or not there's lots of texture, can determine how good it's gonna go in and out of the pocket going against the materials. So look at where the clip lands. So like right here, see how it lands on some carbon fiber? This is very smooth carbon fiber. So the pants are gonna go in and out very nicely on something like that because it also has plenty of ramp. And then also how thick it is right here. Now I've gotten some where it looks like this. Look at this. Look how thin it is underneath the clip, in between the clip and the handle of the knife. It's so thin right there that it's, it doesn't have enough room so when you put it on pants it basically bends it that's not good but as long as it has plenty of room like this see how much room there is it doesn't matter how thick your pants are it'll work I now another thing you want to watch out for with clips is the screws and how close the screws are to the clip because that can also be a tight spot to squeeze pants in between. Ah. Depending on what type of materials your, your pants are and what type of pants you do wear. Now another, uh, or one good way to look at it is if you got recessed clip and recessed screws. Those work the best. It doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes you're, uh, you're just gonna have a recessed clip and sometimes you're not going to have either one, but it can still work really good as long as you have good clearance. Like on this clip. Okay. Another good clip or clips like this, this type of spring clip where you'll see that little um, that indention right there. And basically it gives you a, a really tight clip um, that... That is really nice in and out of the pocket and it hangs on really tight. Um, they're like on Sabenzas and stuff like that. But one thing you want to kind of watch out for is clips that stay off of the material. Some people don't mind them. Some people, you know, I don't really like them personally. They tap and then they're usually pretty loose in the pocket. This one's fine because it's so deep. Um, but... If it's not a deep clip, that can be uh, dangerous. Kind of like this clip right here. You'll notice it's not touching the material. This thing is very loose, and I, I can't even use the clip on this. But I just use it in my fifth pocket, and it's fine. One more thing really quick. I know I'm backtracking back to blades, but you want to make sure you get a good sharpening choil. Even if you don't have a finger choil, a good sharpening choil is your edge is going to start past your plunge grind. And the plunge grind is right there. You want to make sure it starts past it. You know, sometimes you can get things like this where it's pretty close to it, but it's still past it. Sometimes you'll find them where they're right up to it like this, you know, which is okay and it's still fine, but you can get little damages like that little spot right there um, when sharpening when it's that close. 
I was going to go into different detents and different locking mechanisms and everything else, but this video is already 22 minutes long. I think you guys get the point. Just know that the locking mechanisms and whether or not it's going to have, you know, a uh, finger guard and stuff like that. If it's a flipper, you know, if you have a flipper, it's going to be end up being the finger guard. So you want to look at and determine that. Sometimes people don't know like whether or not it's going to have good action or not. Now, one way to determine a flipper is by the point of the um, the center of the pivot. If it's lined up with it or higher than it, then it's most likely going to have good flipping action since you can't determine whether or not it's going to have strong detent or not. Now, there's lots of variations of that, but if I go on to the lock types and detents, this video will be entirely way too long. I love you guys. You guys get the point. Peace.